Hello, everyone. This is the December 26th, the day after Christmas. For those of you who celebrated Christmas, um, I hope you had a wonderful time creating all kinds of new cherished memories because that's what life is all about. Time with family and friends and cherishing each other and really also looking back over the year and thinking about how much your family's changed and grown. And, and then there's all, you know, the family that's a, not with you. All right, that is a distance, either by um, location or I also say emotion. So this is a time where we have a lot of fun and love with the folks around us, but it also can be an emotional time. So it's a good time to sit back and you know, really evaluate those emotions and ask yourself, what is it that is making me so emotional and what can I control? So we talk about, you know, things that is it time to let something go, to close a door. So whether it be a business relationship, a friend, a piece of family member, whether it be a potential um, you know, business opportunity, we talk about the, necess you know, the necessity for perseverance and sticking to it. And that is so true. We want to make sure we do everything we can to make it happen. All right, not that not stop between before that three feet from goal. But sometimes you have to sit back and say, am I holding on to something that really isn't there? And it's not beneficial to me. And that's something that really comes home during the holidays. And a lot of times it's related to family and friends and even, um, you know, something that is as little as um, what is it that you're allowing to get into you in this, this particular holiday season. Mike's been sick as a dog, so we actually didn't do much. We stayed at home. Um, I ran over to see our granddaughter and my daughter and her husband yesterday. But uh, it was the first time in 38 years we had a really quiet Christmas together. But uh, poor thing, he's, it, it seems like every time we go on a long trip, he ends up getting sick. But it also gave me a lot of time to reflect and reflect on what I wanted to talk about today. Because we've talked about New Year's resolutions, we've talked about planning, and you know, as part of that planning, and everyone wants to be positive at the end of the year, and I want to be positive too, but I want to be positive about what's best for you. And that is sometimes you have to let things go. And you know, we talk about you do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, and that's the definition of insanity. Well. When we have a relationship, whether it be personal or family, a friend, even a business associate, um, and we don't really analyze how we're reacting to a situation, we tend to just continue to stir the pot, right? And I've shared with you many times, you can't change someone else, you can only change how you react to them. And I think that uh, this is a good time to think about what is healthy for you. As I've said before, our only precious resource is time. And so are you spending time worrying and fretting over a relationship? That means you're wasting precious time today. And more than likely, that other person isn't. So you're letting them win or letting the, the, disconnect, the disconnection um, continue to bother you and cause you harm. And not just time. We can, I know me, I get physically ill when I think there's something going on with someone that I, that, that I can't mend or fix. And so I challenge you to think about in your life, is there something in your life that you need to let go of as we first you know, we come up, as we start to launch 2019? Is there something that uh, is important for you to really look at it and think about who you are and how you're reacting to things and what it is that um, you need to really analyze, is it perseverance or is it a fear to stand up for yourself? Because they're very different. So I want to challenge you. So I have some questions I'm going to get into and then we'll wrap up. Um, my name is Chad. I was adopted as a teenager and for a long time I've wanted to share my story as not many teens have the opportunity for an adoption experience like mine. You could say that I was a troubled kid and I bounced around quite a bit before I ended up in the foster family that would ultimately adopt me. I gave them a lot of good reasons to let me keep bouncing for they never gave up on me and welcomed me into their family. 
I started writing a book four years ago that has been through various versions and I don't consider it ready to publish. There's a part of me that is now thinking maybe it isn't meant to be. I don't want to quit, but think that maybe I should go looking as alternative ways to share my story. This book is like a cloud hovering me and I, I need to either figure out how to complete it or release it. What am I missing? Well, Chad, um, you know, it, there aren't a lot of people that experience what you did, but what you, you know, maybe it's how you framed it. Maybe there's something in there that you can turn into a positive message. Um, you know, for me, similar to you, well, when I lost my son six years ago, I, I, I still feel that I should write something about losing a child. And, um, but I'm not ready to do that. So maybe you're not ready to do that. And maybe it's not a book that you should be doing. Maybe you should have some sort of a blog or something where you can actually have people communicate with you and talk about it. If you're on social media, test the waters. Talk about a few things that you share in the book. You, I want you to get excited about the book. And obviously you want to have an audience, but you know what is it? It may very well be that the process of writing it has been cathartic. And so you don't feel the need anymore that he has it allowed you to process it inside. So talk to a couple of close people to you who know you and know your circumstance. Um, you know, it sounds to me like your adoptive parents should probably be put on pedestals because it is difficult to adopt a child at, at, at any age, but certainly a teenager brings all sets of uh, issues to deal with and they stuck with you. So I think, you know, from a standpoint of honoring them, and if it's already pretty much in a finished, complete stage, you know, walk away from it. That's what I do when I write something. I actually walk away with, from it for a few months and try not to think about it. And then I come back with a fresh set of eyes and read it and say, okay, that's really good, Sharon. Uh, this isn't so good. So maybe you want to just kind of give yourself a little bit of distance and then come back and look at it. But I want to congratulate you because it sounds to me like you've turned into a wonderful young man. And even though your adoptive foster parents deserve medals and be on a pedestal, I'd say um, you deserve one too because you opened your eyes to the possibilities of life. So congratulations. Next question, Manny. I've been a student of personal development for many years after picking up my first self-help book while battling with depression. I am mindful of what I am putting into my head and have found self-help books to not only be inspirational, but also a helpful way for me to support my own mental health because they are a source of empowerment. I have also been intentional about limiting my time with certain members of my family. I don't want to alienate myself from my family, but for my own well-being, I feel that I cannot be around them at times. Most of them are not positive people, and I end up leaving feeling drained and totally down many times. I love them dearly and want to have a healthy relationship, but don't want to sacrifice my own health in the process. You've said many times how important family is to you. And if you, if you ever have been through a similar situation, please tell me how you got through it. Well, Manny, you know, I, I have that situation. And so you have to make sure that you think about your own health. And yes, you don't want to lose connection with your family. Um, maybe it's a particular family member that is draining to you. I think what you're doing is the healthiest and that's limiting the time with you that you spend with them because you allow that to drain you. But also look at it and say, you know, you come in here and they're down here, right? And instead of being with them and let, allowing them to pull you down, all right, go in with the, with the goal of bringing them up, maybe not all the way up here, but a little bit, so that you can walk in with your held, head held high and, and also you know, know that you've made a positive impact on them. But you know, sometimes, there may be people in your family that are maybe called narcissists. You're not going to have an impact on them. You're not going to change their attitude. However, they'll recognize that there's been a change in you. You know, be proud of yourself for all the work that you've done on yourself and be proud of the fact that you found a place that you can be positive and hold, hold your head up high. And, uh, you know, when you put that coat of armor on, when you go into that situation, it's hard. I know. I mean, I have a member of my family. I don't, you know, I haven't figured out how to communicate so that we have a positive relationship. And it hurts every single day. But you just deal every, with everything you can to maintain who you are. 
and that's giving and loving and positive. And the fact that you have elevated to the fact that you recognize negative influences, that's great because then you can start putting that shield on and realize that that negative influence, you can just not allow it in your space. And yes, you know, you, it's important to maintain a healthy relationship, but understand that word healthy needs to be underlined. Word, when does it work and when does it doesn't? So I think you've come a long way and I congratulate you. And um, you know, it's every time you pick the way that you want to communicate and you pick the way, the environment in which you want to relate to them so that you can control it. It sounds to me like you're well on that way already. Um, next question, happy holidays. My name is Rhonda and I love to create art from non-traditional materials. You can say that I specialize in, in a more industrial version of upcycling. Instead of that, I like that instead of recycling. I've been able to sell my art, but on a limited basis to a couple of dozen repeat clients. I've not been successful in finding ways to connect with new clients. I don't know if the market for my art is just really small or if I need to keep working on visibility for my art. I've only been at this for a couple of years, but I was hoping by now that I would be my it would be my primary income source. That hasn't happened, and so as I'm sourcing materials, creating art, and then finding clients on my off time for my full time job. It is physically demanding work and I love it, but I am tired and have been thinking a lot lately about letting this lately about letting this go and searching for a different kind of opportunity. Well, Rhonda, there's a couple things here. You, you say that you love it. So when you're doing something that you love, probably brings you its own reward, whether or not you're selling it. Um, and maybe what, Part of when we talk about successful businesses, all right, in the Play Big movement, you may want to look into that course because we talk about it's not just the product or the service, it's the platform. So let's look at your platform and how you can build on that. So please join the Play Big movement and we can talk about that more. But, um, and you've got a couple of shops that, that carry your work. Well, maybe you need to look at the Shopify store or an eBay store um, so that you have more exposure. Maybe you want to look at boutiques and you didn't tell me where you live. So, you know, if you're certainly if you're in a tourist town, finding boutiques that would carry, even if you have to have them carry them on consignment, that gives you the opportunity for exposure to see what you're doing. And think about what, what pieces are most popular. And maybe you want to do, you know, concentrate on those initially so that you can get the biggest bang for your buck. But um, yeah. Obviously, you want this to become a business and you love what you're doing. Let's focus on your platform for 2019. Look and see what other ways you can do to distribute what you have. Do you have a website? Do you have some beautiful photography of the pieces you've done? Get some testimonials from the people who have bought your, your, your pieces and that have um, had compliments on them, okay? Building that kind of thing. So you continue asking support. Going back to those people who have gotten your pieces, but asking them to share it on their social media, or maybe f having a really unique piece that you're really proud of. And maybe, I don't know if it's, you said it, you, it's your art, but uh, if by chance, for instance, you did jewelry, maybe ask, giving a piece to someone who's in the public eye and asking them to, you know, when they're asked about it, to share it, or maybe you make purses. So those kinds of things that let a lot of people, um, give things for the Oscars, right? Very, very expensive things, but they want that exposure, that platform. You're not quite ready for that, but think about ways that you can get more exposure, building that platform. And, um, and then think about how you can demonstrate what you do. As long as you still love what you do and you just need some advice and some help, ask for some help from somebody that can help you on building that platform. And this one is, my name is Vicki. I've invested the last 12 months and a lot of money with a marketing company that was going to help me increase my visibility and credibility online as an expert in the field of emotional intelligence. It's a, pop, it's a popular topic. Yes, it is. And I already have somewhat of a following on Facebook and LinkedIn. I have followed the instructions given to me, even when I didn't agree. I've been there. I've done that by these marketing experts and don't feel like I have received the benefits promised. Some things are beyond their control, and I keep getting messages to be patient that they're working on things. But at this point, I wonder if it is best to just cut ties and move on. 
It is hard to walk away from such an investment in time, not to mention the financial commitment. And I don't want to give up too soon, but at what point is the writing on the wall? Wow, Vicki. I bet everybody watching and listening, everybody has probably been in your shoes. I know I have. We've tried several different marketing experts along the way, people who made all kinds of promises. So you're, um, you know, no one's immune to this issue. And it's something that uh, maybe you want to sit down and try and do an assessment as to, you know, what is the problem? Why isn't it working? Is it the offer? Is it their ability to successfully craft your offer? Is it the eyeballs? You know, do a really try and get together a few people that you know and trust and kind of do an analysis of it. Find out if there are other, you know, when you hired them, I'm hoping that you found out they had some satisfied clients. So talk to those clients about their satisfaction and what, you know, what went right for them. So maybe you can, you know, is it part of due diligence, understanding what went wrong? Because again, just throwing more money after bad, good money after bad may not be the answer. But again, you don't, sometimes it does take time to build up. Right now we're looking at a new company to help us lift up my website and help us support the Play Big movement. And we're doing the same thing. We're talking to several companies and we're talking to um, looking at what they've done in the past and things that they're going to do and what the commitments are. You know, people, some people will guarantee certain levels of results. Others won't. Um, but when it comes to marketing and platform and building, you need to really look at it and maybe that's not your expertise. So you bring in some people who are and have like a mastermind to analyze what you've done what the results were? Did you you said you 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 followed their advice even when you didn't agree with it? Well, go back and look at that because I've done that too. And it's like when you hire an expert, you have to rely on their expertise. So I believe in that. But then when it doesn't pan out, then you have to go back and say, okay, was there a disconnect in what they did and who I am? Did it cause inconsistency in my brand? And that's where maybe you let them be, do their own thing, but with a certain amount of brand quality control built in so that you're okay with the messaging. And that's something that sometimes is really hard to do because I've been there too. But, it, you know, Angela and I do that all the time. We want to do something different. We find the expert in that field and then we like say, okay, I don't want to constrict them too much because I'm hiring them for their expertise. Let's see what they can produce and what they can do. So, it's something that uh, you may not be able to make the decision by yourself. Get the team together and go through it and try and do it without the emotions. Remember I say high emotion and low intelligence. Well, and that kind of brings us all back here, whether it's Chad or Manny, um, Rhonda, Vicki, you know, all of us, we have stages in our life when things change and we have to figure out what the next step is. And when we're high emotionally, it's hard for us to make a, a, a good decision and it's something that having other people around you that can help you look at it from a non-emotional position is probably a really good good thing to do hi karen linda i see angela is with me i'm trying to see who else is on the line here and it's something that uh, lana's with me anu wonderful lydia lisa lisa i think you were like the first on thanks so much for being with us but when we come as we close this this year together, I want to go back to saying, you know, what has worked for you and what isn't working for you? What is that high emotional cost? Is it a relationship? Is it a business um, relationship? Is it a potential marketing effort? That high emotional cost. And sometimes you have to take a step back and analyze is it worth staying in your life in 2019 as is? Is it worth keeping in your life in 2019 but adjusting how you deal with it to give it a fresh look? Or is it something that you just need to remove from the space? And that's when you have a group of people that can look at it from a non-emotional place but you have to think about it from a standpoint of your head and your heart. What's best for you? You know, sometimes and when it's family, it's even more difficult because um, you may not be able to get rid of the family member, but you can adjust how you behave around them. 
how you how you show up, when you show up, um, and that's something that you can control. And so start off with where is you where are you emotionally? What can you control? And how can you adjust your behavior, your attitude, to create a better 2019? Hi, Ginger. And that's that's really an issue that um, comes down to investing in yourself, investing in your health, so that 2019 can be your best year ever. I remember in my old partnership, you know, we'd have a disagreement and the next day he was back fine. It would take me days to get over it. And I finally realized that's not hurting anybody but me. And so you have to say, okay, how, I need to change how I deal with this and how I allow it to impact me. Um, he wasn't going to change, but I needed to make changes. And so I changed the way I behaved for my years until the, the point got where I said, you know, this is such an unhealthy environment I had to leave. And sometimes that happens. Um, obviously it happens when people get divorced, right? Uh, maybe it's a member of your family that you're not married to, but they're part, you know, part of your life. And you have to ask yourself, how can I adjust myself, my behavior, so that I can protect my emotions and not allow myself to have this as a festering? Because it festers, it festers, and then it becomes a physical ailment. And so as you look at 2019, we need to remove all those obstacles we can. What needs to change in your business and your personal life? What is it that's unhealthy that you need to set aside or change how you're dealing with it so that you can make it a healthier relationship, a healthier envi environment? Because you can, you can. Maybe it's gonna be hurtful in the transition, but in the long term, when you can look at the future and say, I'm making the right decision for me. That's hard, particularly for mothers. Um, you know, you say, oh my gosh, you know, I should put myself last. No, at this point, you need to take care of yourself. We talk about the play big movement. You need to be healthy, all right? And the way you can live, do you, you want other people, ask yourself in that particular relationship, what would you say to someone else if they were in that? Step back and say, how would I advise someone to deal with that? And sometimes it's like, not be so quick to respond. Take a step back. But in any event, I want to end this on a positive note because I want to share with you, if you can readjust relationships, close the door on certain things, or just readjust the time that you're with them so that you free up time that would have been negative in your space. You free up time to create the world of new possibilities and concentrate on being with people who do love you, people with, that really want to support you, people that you want to support, people that give you a, make you smile. Focus on that energy as you go into the new year because in 2019, you have every, every right to have incredible success. And that success comes with smiles and love. And so that is when you start reducing the stuff that brings you down. You make room for things that can bring you up. So to a fabulous 2019, and again, think about how you can free up the time for more laughter, love, excitement, and new opportunity. I wish it all for you and your family. Love to you all.